Today in this lecture, we are going to discuss the determinants of long term arterial pressure level. What are the determinants or what are the factors which basically determine the long term arterial pressure level? What factors contribute in the long term arterial pressure level that basically decides that whether the arterial pressure is going to be high or it's going to be normal or it's going to be low. To discuss the determinants, we will uh, have to recap or summarize our previous lecture which was basically about the infinite feedback gain. In the previous lecture, we discussed that basically if we draw a graph of the renal output versus uh, salt and water intake, we will see that there is an equilibrium point at around 100 mm of mercury or the arterial pressure of around 100 mm of mercury. And at this very point at 100 mm of mercury, 100 millimeter of mercury, the intake the intake of salt and water and the renal output are equal and they balance each other and in the long term and in normal circumstances the arterial pressure of the human body is 100 millimeter of mercury. So this red color graph is basically showing the renal output. It is showing the renal output and the black color graph is showing the intake of salt and water. And the green dot is basically showing the equilibrium point or the point at which the intake of salt and water and renal output are equal. And that equilibrium point is, is exactly at 100 millimeter of mercury. And this 100 millimeter of mercury is the normal arterial pressure level of normal human beings. Now what are basically the determinants of long term arterial pressure level? So from the same graph, from the same diagram, we can see that the two most important determinants, two most important determinants of the long term arterial pressure level are basically shift in the renal function curve and shift in the curve for the intake of salt in water. Now the, the shift in the arterial pressure can only occur the, the changes in the arterial pressure level can only occur if either there is a change in this renal function curve or simply function of the kidneys or there is a difference or there is a change in the intake of salt and water. Now we will explain this point with the help of two further diagrams. Now we see that normally when the intake of water and salt and the renal functions are normal, the equilibrium point is at 100 millimeter of mercury. And the same is being shown here in this diagram that the normal arterial pressure level is at 100 millimeter of mercury or the equilibrium point is present at normal level. In the same diagram, the, the same two graphs are present again. This black color graph or this black color line is showing the intake of salt and water and the green and red color lines or the renal function curves are basically showing the, in the, the difference, the difference in renal function. So the curve is basically renal function curve or in other words, it is showing the function of kidneys or renal function. Now any change in the renal function curve due to any change in kidneys or renal functions will shift this curve from the normal point. So it can come to this side and it can go to uh, like it can shift on the left side and it can shift on the right side as well. So in this diagram we see that the some pathology or some problem in the kidneys have shifted the curve on the right side and now the kidneys are operating at a higher pressure level. So the arterial pressure or the equilibrium point has shifted from this normal equilibrium point of 100 millimeter of mercury to this new equilibrium point of 
200 millimeter of mercury. Now this change in the renal function curve, this change in the renal function curve which was normally present like this or like this, this change in the renal function has basically changed the equilibrium point or it has changed the arterial pressure level. So this is basically one determinant. The second determinant of for changing the arterial pressure level is the is changes is changes in the intake of salt and water. In this second diagram we see that the, the renal functions are normal. Kidneys are performing normally. The output, the renal output curve is exactly normal. But the intake of salt and water has basically increased. Intake and salt intake of salt and water has increased from the normal of one to up to four times. So as the intake of salt and water has increased four times, similarly the, the equilibrium point has shifted from this 100 mm of mercury from this 100 mm of mercury to that new level of around 200 mm of mercury or 200 millimeter of mercury so the two basic determinants the two basic determinants of long term arterial pressure levels the two main factors which will determine the arterial pressure level in the long term are basically changes in the renal function, changes in the functions of kidneys and increase or decrease in the intake of salt and water. If the kidneys are performing normally and the intake of salt and water is also normal in normal circumstances then the equilibrium point will be 800 mm of mercury and the arterial pressure will be 100 mm of mercury. Any change, any increase, small increase in the arterial pressure will basically increase, uh, any increase in the arterial pressure on uh, this side will basically increase the renal output and it will try to bring back the arterial pressure towards the normal side. Similarly, any decrease, any decrease in the arterial pressure toward the lower side will increase basically the intake of salt and water and will also try to bring the arterial pressure to this point, the equilibrium point and this is something known as infinite feedback gain, infinite feedback gain. If the arterial pressure increases to this side, the renal functions increase or the renal output also increase. As the arterial pressure keep on increasing, the, or the output or the renal output also keeps on increasing. If the arterial pressure keeps on decreasing towards this side, the renal output also starts decreasing until and until until and until it touches the zero point. Similarly, when the arterial pressure decreases, the output, the intake of salt and water basically is more than the uh, output. Here you can see that if the arterial pressure has decreased, here it's 250 and here it is started decreasing toward the zero. So if the arterial pressure has touched here, the output has also come here. This red color graph has reached here at zero point, but the intake remains higher than the output. Intake of salt and water is higher than renal output. But if the arterial pressure increases on this side, if the arterial pressure increases this side, the output keeps on increasing, but the intake remains the same. So both the factors, basically both these components tries to bring back the arterial pressure to the equilibrium point. But if a permanent change occur in the renal function, then this equilibrium point will shift from 100 to 150 or 200 or 250. So changes may occur in the renal function. 
it may shift from the uh, normal point to a higher point changes may occur in the renal functions so output will decrease and arterial pressure will go to a new level it will be a new level that may be a new high level similarly if the the renal functions are normal if the renal functions are normal but the intake of salt and water increases then again the arterial pressure will shift to a new level that may be 150 or 200 mm of mercury so the the function so the the the, the purpose of discussing the these two graphs and these example is to show that the arterial pressure is very much deter uh, uh, arterial pressure is very much uh, dependent on the renal functions which is our main topic role of kidneys in the long term regulation of arterial pressure so the arterial pressure is very much dependent on the kidneys role of kidneys and it is also dependent on the intake of salt and water changes in the renal function changes in the renal function and increase or decrease in the intake of salt and water both can shift the arterial pressure level and these are the two most important determinants of long term arterial pressure level thanks a lot for watching the video